What's up guys, Shuri here, and, and today we're going to talk about the shotgun glitch, the best way to do it, and how it's not just about shotguns, but multiple weapons. So where we're going to start off is how to do it. So what you wanna do is you wanna shoot and then switch to a backup weapon. This will let you shoot it instantly. I know it's kinda of hard to see, but this will show you how it's done a little better. By breaking the frames up every 0.04 seconds, you can see that as I switch, it immediately comes up and then it shoots them, does the damage immediately, but then it goes back down and then will reappear because in this amount of time is how long it should have took you to shoot in the first place before. So it actually shoots you about 0.3 seconds faster. But right here, we are gonna be able to see it works with your throwing knives as well. As you can see, the throwing knife is still in my hand when it hits them and damages them. This shows you exactly how influential and good this can be. Right here, it also works after you throw a throwing knife. It will start to shoot immediately. This can make kills happen way faster, and it works with all kinds of weapons. And it goes very fast in all of these scenarios. I will not be slowing it down every time, but only when it's really significant. And to show you how insane this is, you can barely tell that I switched to a backup weapon at all in this. It literally shows up for less than 0.1 seconds, so that's why I slowed it down. It is truly insane. First off, we're going to go with the Arbitrator. I'm going to do four different weapons. I'll segment everything so you can look at it as you want. But I'll tell you the pros, cons, and all these different four weapons, they all have a certain style and I think that it's really important to look at them. But the biggest thing is, for Arbitrator, you want to use the Arbitrator at the mid-range, and when they get closer, you switch to the shotgun, which will do a lot of damage. The reason the Arbitrator is number one is it shoots the damage in burst, which makes it much more effective, and it actually shoots two bullets at a time, this ends up being an insane amount of damage, and it's very good in the mid to short range, but for something like a longer range scenario, you would like to use a backup weapon like a Barracuda or a Scout, which is what I choose, but you always want to make sure you change to not only your shotgun, but you need to have your backup weapon as your um, arbitrator. That way you can ensure that when you switch that backup weapon, it will give you the multiple shots. That's why right here, I immediately switched to my shotgun and then switched to my arbitrator. That way I can take advantage of the shotgun switch glitch. But remember, this also affects throwing knives and grenades. That's why the grenade got thrown out while it was still in my hand throwing, which is very strange. But remember, this is very effective at things like throwing knives. As you saw there, it was still in my hand when it does the damage. Just so you know, this also works with rockets. You can have the rocket pull up immediately in people's faces while it's still trying to shoot, even though rockets take a long time. So if you're going to shoot a rocket, make sure that you're doing it as you're shooting someone. I have refrained from showing this when I thought it was a glitch, and I know I keep calling it that, but this is a game mechanic. They are keeping it. And this has been confirmed by moderators. That's why I'm telling you all this now and showing you how to do it. Before, when I thought it was a glitch, it's something that's kind of like an exploit and shouldn't be done. But now that I know that's not true, um, I think you guys should know how to do it. I also think you need to do a three to four finger claw. I will upload a video on how to do that better when I can. So right here, you want to be able to use this gun with the grenades like that, and this glitch allows you to throw the grenade faster, and the burst of the damage makes it very good. Next up, dragon fire. The reason this is so good is because when you do damage up close, with the dragon fire, it protects you from damage, and it makes it where you tend to die less. And since the shotgun needs to be up close to do this glitch, it ends up doing a lot to keep you alive. At the end of the video, I will show you all the different perks and on the guns and explain them to you. But for now, we'll keep going. One of the main things that makes the dragon fire number two is it's not only good up close, it is also good in the medium to longer range, and that is important. So right here, we do end up getting their whole team, and then we just die a little bit at the end, which is fine. And remember, my bat is not fully upgraded, so if you have a weaker knife, this might be a good combo for you. 
But hopefully this actually won't be as good because they'll get rid of this stupid bear trap being this powerful. With the change, it is insane, especially with Undying. But anyways, you want to be able to switch back and knife as you can, because remember, knifing, grenades, everything is all affected in this, and it just really helps you be able to do so much damage, and just really be able to do a ton. I mean, it's really helpful to be able to kill people super quickly, and if you use Undying, you're actually able to do so much with this combo, and the bear trap doing a ton of damage up front just does a lot to be able to keep you alive and in their lives very quickly and it really just ends up being one of the best combos with dragon fire because you end up giving yourself that damage protection with the dragon fire making it much more likely that you're able to kill people and again the dragon fire is very good in that medium to long range and it's super good up close this will allow you to start killing people much faster and be able to do things from longer range and when you get up close you're nearly untouchable that's why it is number two it's not as good as the burst damage from arbitrator gives you but it is basically a close second probably and it's just a different kind of good it gives you that stem protection, which is huge, especially since a lot of what you're doing is getting up close and then using your dragon fire immediately followed by your bear trap, making it extremely good. Wasp for number three is very similar to dragon fire, and the reason it's number three is it's going to be less good in the longer range than a dragon fire will be, but you can kind of supplement that with the scout but that does make it a lot harder to do. Mostly for scout, what you really want to do is use it to get places fast, and then right there, as you saw, I tried to go ahead and switch to my backup weapon, but I couldn't do it in time. But it ends up giving you a ton of damage right here, and it ends up giving me a four at once that was just done incredibly fast. This makes Wasp such an incredibly enticing option because of the simple fact it does so much damage up close and you can do it so incredibly fast. The only downside to this is in order to get there quickly, you usually would use Scout and you can no longer do that because you need to have your assault rifle with your backup as a um, shotgun. So it makes it a lot harder to be able to use weapons like that. But the thing is, Wasp works so well as a shotgun, you don't necessarily have to use it that way. And over time, you get used to making sure in your head that you're going to switch your assault rifle and your backup weapon as a bear trap, even when you have scout out, and that way you always are prepared. It does take a lot of practice to get used to. Luckily, back in the day for ESL, you would want to manually switch because it was faster, so I already have this kind of in my head to do this kind of stuff quickly and the muscle memory for it, but... It does take time to get used to it, even if they're noobs like this who are using rockets, I'll be a noob and use my throwing knives back, it all works out. But remember with this combo for long range like that, you want to use your scout, then make sure you have your shotgun and your wasp as your two weapons, that way you can do the glitch. And these guys rocketed, I will have this video out because I set a record for this map, personal record, it was in the 300s, you guys will like it. I also set another record on a farm for 400, and uh, that's crazy, because TDM getting 400 points is hard, and there was a Savage member on the other team, so that'll be coming soon. Okay, so back to this video. We're going to use that glitch to throw the uh, grenade immediately. We didn't actually mean to there, and that's one downside to all of this, is a lot of the time you don't mean to, and it also works on Barracuda. But when it happens with Barracuda, it doesn't actually show the like circle wheel starting and can make it very hard to aim. And I don't think aim assist works while it's happening. So it's not all great. And uh, they do end up fixing this in the PTS, which that plus them not addressing this for two weeks is what made me realize this might not be a glitch, but it might be a feature. And um, it just kind of sucks. But alas, what you gonna do? It's God. They just do stupid stuff without telling you all the time. But again, we're going to use the glitch to be able to throw a knife and kill everyone on the other team. And I love doing that. It works great. And last but not least, although it is the least, <laughs> um, Survivor. And this is actually one of the best ones from longer range. And it's really good medium range. 
it's okay at short range. It doesn't get worse or anything. But um, that's the reason it's on the list is that it's the best one from all distances. The other ones give you other benefits, like, and that's why they're better. But uh, as far as things go, it's not the worst. And you also have the bleed damage, which you can use to track people across the map and be able to kill people like right here. We are going to kill people with our scout. We run up. We do a little bit of damage on this guy to get the bleed damage going. We do enough damage with scout to get them low. And the bleed damage kills them while they're hiding. This is very good. And again, this is very good in the long to medium range. And it's good enough up close to get the job done. It also shoots incredibly quickly, which is not a small thing. Especially since the bear trap does so much damage. The faster the gun shoots is actually a pretty big deal. Allowing you to get your kill times to a much lower level. And I think this shows the versatility of this weapon the most right here in the medium range. It's going to help. He's going to get low, hide behind the thing, which the bleed damage told me. Right here, we're going to go watch for people to go back and forth. Again, we're doing a ton of damage, seeing where they are from the bleed damage, and then we're going to come back, find them on the other side. We're just going to look for people. We do see someone, and we just wait until we find them at medium to long range. We do a ton of damage, and we are able to just kill so many people so quickly. And using the backup weapon of the bear trap, which shoots quickly, we are able to kill so many, and then use the glitch with the grenades to be able to just do so much damage and get kills very quickly, killing their whole team over and over, allowing you to win matches with very high kill counts, and then allow the bleed damage to take you home. And finally, the weapon perks. First up is Wasp. So the main things about the Wasp are it does extra damage at close range, it increases the damage dealt if the weapon owner is on fire or frozen. With things like Porcupine, Stormbringer, and Orion all being very good right now, this is a very undervalued and underrated kind of like perk of a weapon. So then last but not least for the Wasp, reduces the damage of reload time upon an elimination. So make sure after you kill someone with the Wasp, as long as you're not pointing at someone, which will make you fire a pistol, go ahead and reload because you will do it quicker and this is a very good thing to get used to doing. The next weapon up is going to be the survivor. So the survivor's only thing is it deals damage over time. This is 75 damage a second and it can help you track people as well as do more damage. It's not bad and it can force people to use their heals on things they don't really want to. It ends up being pretty nice. Uh, it can also be undone by Antidote, which if they have armor, actually hurts you, so be careful for that. Right here is Dragonfire, what I consider one of the better things with better perks. The first thing is the closer to the enemy, the less damage you will receive while you are shooting. And it actually still works after you switch your weapon because it lasts for about a second. So as fast as you shoot when you switch, it works pretty much the whole time you're shooting. Just make sure you're shooting with people with dragon fire as much as possible and then switching to the shotgun. While this gun is good at medium range as well, it also does extra damage at close range, which can be very helpful, especially with the way this combo works. The last perk is Fire Hazard, chance of dealing extra fire damage upon hit. This can be very useful, and I don't exactly know the exact stats on how often it does it, but it's enough to matter. I know I normally know these kind of things, but on this one I just don't. I'm not really sure how I could find it, because God's a Boom doesn't make it easy. If anyone does know, and you can leave it in the comments, I'd appreciate it. So last is going to be the Arbitrator. Um, they don't actually tell you what any of the perks of this gun are, except for, like, a post that I found, and that's kind of stupid. But basically what it does is it shoots in burst, it's kind of like a shotgun, has multiple pellets, and it starts doing the maximum amount of damage in anywhere from 1 to 10 meters. I know that's very hard to determine, because this game doesn't have a way to determine how you're at 10 meters, but you will do a lot less damage from far away. So it's important to use Scout when you're like further away, and then go to Arbitrator, and then go to a shotgun. It's harder, and you've got to get used to switching things manually, and that's why this is a very good combo. 
but it may be very hard for beginners and people who just aren't used to manually switching on the fly, which is a skill you have to learn. So don't get discouraged for not good with it at first, or if you're not good with it ever, because you can use things like Dragonfire, which are much easier and still work great. Okay guys, thanks for watching. And I will have a new video out soon that is me breaking all kinds of records, a 400 point TDM match against a Savage player, and just getting absurd things like a 22 second from start to finish unstoppable with a triple and a 5 at once. So all good things, and I hope you guys like this and you like those. Have a great day guys.